The founding of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at the hands of its legendary leader, King Abdelaziz, ushered in a process of integration and unity of the people of this blessed country. God says in the Holy Quran, and hold fast all together by the rope which God stretches out for you, and be not divided among yourselves, and remember with gratitude God's favor on you, for you were enemies, and He joined your hearts in love, so that by His grace you became brethren. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has won the hearts and minds of the Arabs and Muslims, especially for being the keeper of the most sacred places in Mecca and Medina, where Islam was revealed and from which it spread in the world. And so no wonder that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia enjoys the devotion and respect of all Muslims around the globe. Dialogue is one of the most important foundations on which human civilization evolved and flourished. The practice of dialogue in Saudi Arabia takes many forms, and the discourse has been guided by some Islamic and patriotic principles since the establishment of the Saudi state. In recent years, however, the scope and intensity of public debate have extended to wider domains of public interest and community concerns. The process is characterized by increasing tolerance and sense of national unity among debaters. And it is promoted through the forums organized by the King Abdelaziz Center for National Dialogue. The Saudi government's efforts to give new impetus for public debate and the modernization of its venues are not just isolated measures. They are integral parts of comprehensive development and reforms that touch on all walks of life and endeavors in the kingdom. And for that purpose, King Abdelaziz's Center for National Dialogue was set up to energize public debate and further cement the relationship between the people with the country's leadership. The idea of having the center was crystallized at a meeting of the country's leading scholars and intellectuals held at King Abdelaziz's public library from the 15th to the 18th of Jumad al-Awwal, 1424 Hijra, corresponding to the 15th to the 18th of July, 2003. They debated important national issues and came up with some recommendations one of which called for the need to set up an institution that can promote public dialogue, prepare its agenda, organize its venues, and work on ways to instill debate as a cultural value. The country's wise leadership responded warmly to this recommendation. On the 5th of Jumadah Thani, 1424 Hijrah, His Royal Highness Prince Abdullah bin Abdelaziz, the Crown Prince at that time, announced on behalf of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Fahad's approval to the establishment of a specialized institution for the promotion of public debating on national issues. It was to be called King Abdelaziz's Center for National Dialogue. My fellow countrymen, we have seen some important developments in recent months, one of which is the convening of the National Intellectual Dialogue. This forum, which brought together the best of the country's elites, discussed some national issues in a loving atmosphere of Islamic tolerance. I have no doubt at all that the establishment of the center and its activities in spearheading public debates will be a historical achievement by providing additional channels for the articulation of constructive ideas and discourse. Since the inception of the King Abdelaziz Center for National Dialogue, public debates on national issues have been enhanced through various programs and forums that encouraged discourse, moderation, and the respect of differing viewpoints. I have personally experienced the open-door policy which encouraged people to speak their minds before the country's leadership, and it is one of the most splendid policies this country is proud of. And so this trust between the government and the people must be developed further.
Maintaining our national identity gives this country a strong moral power to our nation. It also translates to a political power when dealing with other nations, and it gives us a spiritual drive in our developmental efforts at home. If we want to start reform, it should not only address some emergent situations, it should be far reaching reforms for people's education. We must educate them so that a person can not only understand what is said, but also be able to debate it critically. We must be wholly committed to dialogue. The debate in the lecture halls should enable us to discover the weaknesses and faults. Since its establishment, the King Abdelaziz Center for National Dialogue has organized scores of debating forums and training programs. Their sessions attracted many intellectuals and scholars of different persuasions and intellectual perspectives. The center selected the topmost issues that concern people for in depth presentation and critical deliberations. The venues alternated among all of the kingdom's regions so that the local population could have the opportunities to participate and candidly express their viewpoints. We should be forthright in discussing our problems with open hearts and minds. Our people are staunch believers and united under the banner of Islam, and in no way difference of opinion should turn their love for one another into animosity. Differences of opinion may indeed lead to animosity sometimes, but one should not be more concerned about maintaining friendship than expressing one's opinions. Our youths have a rightful claim on us to provide them with the minimum level of opportunities for a dignified livelihood. The National Dialogue Forums, organized by the Center, deliberated on a broad spectrum of political, socio-economic and educational issues, along with other problems. Extremism and moderation were explored by the forums in a multidisciplinary methodical approach. Saudi women were active participants in the forums by presenting their insights about their vital roles, concerns and potentialities for national development. And indeed, the center has given special interest to women issues, their concern, aspirations and rights. No one says that women cannot get employment, but we say that there are available jobs that are more suitable for women, and we encourage women to seek them. Our achievements as women have not come this far without God's grace and our own persistence, hard work and faith, not to mention the love and encouragement of the men in our families, be they fathers, brothers, husbands or sons. The youth, being the nation's assets for the future, were involved in various national dialogue forums and in their preparatory meetings. Interaction with other cultures was one of the important issues dealt with by the center's several forums. After an in-depth deliberation, a comprehensive draft guideline has been drawn for engagement in dialogue with the world's cultures. The objective or ambition has been to institutionalize dialogue as a tradition and practice in our society. Dialogue has to become a part of our lifestyle and a way of life. National dialogues serve the purposes of public reforms of our society. They are also an instrument of exposing new trends and changes in public opinion which thus can be brought to the attention of decision makers, intellectuals and researchers. Debating the issues was carried out in a spirit of friendship and respect among opposing proponents. The first condition for any debate is that of adhering to a contextual reference without which any discourse could turn into irrelevant discussion. And so the contextual reference for this dialogue, just like any affairs in this country, are the teachings of the Holy Quran and Prophet Muhammad's traditions and their interpretation. One of the utmost roles the center aspires to fulfill is the popularization of dialogue so that it becomes ingrained in the Saudi cultural values. And for that purpose, the center adopted an ambitious program to train people in the arts and skills of debate and communications, especially involving young men and women in courses held throughout the kingdom's regions. 
Additionally, the center organizes joint programs with private and government institutions to teach people the ethics and principles of conducting debates. This center, being a pioneering intellectual project, is a great cultural achievement, credited to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah ibn Abdulaziz. It has already made a good headway in popularizing debate as part of the Saudi society's culture. Yet we hope dialogue will be ingrained for practice at homes, schools, mosques, and in every life endeavor. And this is the most important mission of the national dialogue. To educate people on dialogue, the center's studies and publishing department distributes many relevant publications to educational institutions and other venues. An electronic dialogue forum has been posted online to give people the opportunity to debate issues and communicate with the center. Tens of parliamentarian, academic and press delegations have come from everywhere to familiarize themselves with this unique Saudi experience. The center dedicates many open channels with the media for the promotion of public debates which are organized in different venues and occasions. Indeed, newspapers, radio and television have all contributed to lively national dialogue. The King Abdelaziz Center for National Dialogue sponsors debating events in partnership with private institutions and organizations of civil society. These activities aim to spread the culture of dialogue in the Saudi society and ingrain it in the people's lifestyle and practice. The National Dialogue will help to establish common understanding and enhance cooperation in our pluralistic society. But most importantly, it will enrich our religious heritage and cultural identity.